Welcome to your beginner's guide on the DJI mic. Now this is a super useful wireless audio system that gives you two transmitters and one receiver. And in this video, we're gonna break down everything that you need to know about the DJI mic so that you can start using them in your videos. Now I've been working with this system since they first announced it and I've been using it in almost all of my videos since. And I've found that they've become an essential tool whenever I'm out filming. So let me just give you a quick rundown of what we're gonna go over in this video. In section one, we're gonna do an overview of the devices themselves and just show you where all the buttons are. In section two, we're gonna get into the functions and how everything works in these wireless microphones. And in section three, we're gonna talk about workflow and how you can use these for your videos. So before we dive into section one, let's Let's just talk about why you would want to use the DJI mic. So this is a microphone system that has two wireless microphones and one receiver. It's very similar to the Rode Wireless Go 2. However, the Rode Wireless Go 2 had some different issues and DJI has solved a lot of those with this system. So the DJI mic not only comes with the transmitter and receivers, but you also get a charging case. And this charging case is essential because you never have to bring up backup batteries to charge the transmitters and the receivers. With this size of wireless system, there's no replaceable battery. So you have to always keep them charged. And with the DJI mic, you get about five hours of use out of the receiver and five and a half hours of use out of the transmitter. So for a lot of situations, that's more than enough for what you're filming. But it's great if you need more than that five hours, well, in between takes, you can pop it in the case and it keeps the battery charged. Now you also get two wireless transmitters with this kit, which allows you to mic up two people at once. You don't always need the two transmitters, but it's also a good backup if you're just working as a solo creator, because in the case that you need more than that five and a half hours, you can just switch out the transmitters. So you can use this system as an individual, or if you have two people mic'd up, you can independently work with each of their audio, and we'll break down how that works in the workflow section. But the system makes it super easy to have complete control over your audio, and on the transmitters themselves, there's a backup recording, so that if there's some issue between the transmitter and the receiver on the camera, you always have a clean backup recording on the transmitter and you can pull that off later. So if you're in a situation where a person walks away and you lose that audio, well, you're always gonna have that audio once you pull the backup off the transmitter. And also with this system, you have a display that makes it super easy to see all of your settings and your controls. So when I use the DJI mic, it gives me that flexibility to walk away from camera and get some different shots where the frame is wider and I'm not always having to be an arm stretch away from the camera. If I'm just using a shotgun mic, you have to stay close enough to the camera for the shotgun mic to be able to pick up your audio. So the DJI mic gives you the flexibility to go anywhere and capture clean audio. All right, so let's just dive right into the first section. So the DJI mic has two components. You have the charging case, which holds your transmitter, your receiver, and some of your attachments. And then you have this extra accessory case which holds your windscreens and a couple cables. This is all you need to take with you when you go out to film. So the charging case is super simple. It's just got a door that opens and closes. There's no real lock on it. It's got four lights in the front that tells you how much battery is left in the charging case. And then it's got a port on the back which is where you charge the charging case. That's it, it's super simple. So when we flip this up, you'll see all your devices and this is in the charging state. So you have your two transmitters on both sides, you have your receiver in the middle, and then you can see on top, you have your phone attachment for a lightning port, and you have your USB-C attachment, which works for something like the Action 2. So when you first open the case, wait a second until all the lights turn on. You should have a light on both transmitters and the screen should light up, showing you the battery level of each transmitter and the receiver, and it also shows you how many hours of backup recording you have left. So this is a quick indication of how much battery is left on each device, and also just how much data you have left on the transmitters. Now you can record up to 14 hours of backup recording on both transmitters, and that's a lot of time for backup recording, but you wanna make sure that if you're using that backup recording, that you clear it before you go out and film again. So it's a quick way to see if you have data on these transmitters. Now let's look at each transmitter. They're identical, they're, they're gonna be the exact same. There's no real way to know the difference between them, except for when you see the microphone levels on the receiver. So it might be a good idea just to label one and two on the back so that you know which one's which. Now looking at the top, you're gonna see that there's the microphone 
of the transmitter itself. So this is a microphone and also a transmitter and you don't need to use any additional mics with this. But also on the right, there is a spot to put in a microphone. So you can attach something like a lavalier mic and have this just on your belt and have just the lavalier mic up on your shirt. Now on the left side, you're gonna see there's a USB-C port. This is where you charge the transmitter if you're not using the case. And it's also where you can transfer the data off to your computer. And then also there is the power button. And the power button is also the mute button. Now on the right side, you'll see two buttons. You'll see one with a little microphone and one with a little linking pairing icon. On the bottom, you'll see the four dots. That's how it charges with the charging case. And on the back, you have the clip, which allows you to put this on your belt or clip it onto your shirt. But also you have this little magnet. Now this is useful because you could just put this on the inside of your shirt and clip the microphone on the outside. I use the microphone a lot of times in this way. You could also hide the microphone by putting it on the inside and all you have is this black square on the outside. So this clip on the back is also an additional magnet which allows you to put it in different places on your clothing super easy without having to have it clipped on the top of your shirt. So in the upper left hand corner you're going to have your light that tells you you're powered on and when you click the backup recording a red light's going to go on on the other side. So you're gonna have some indications here with both lights on the two corners. Now looking at the receiver, you have a screen which has a ton of information and we're gonna go over all that in the next section. On the left-hand side, you're gonna have two ports. You're gonna have one for headphones and you're gonna have one that says out. The out is what goes to your camera and you're gonna use the cable that DJI supplied and it's gonna go from this device to your camera's record input. But if your camera doesn't have a headphone out, you can go headphone out on the receiver and you can listen to what you're recording. Now on the right side, you'll see you have your power button and you have a USB-C. Again, this USB-C is to charge if you're not using the charging case. So you don't have to take the charging case with you. You could just take the transmitter and receiver and then just charge it using the USB-C on the side. Now on the back, you'll see there's these eight gold dots, and that's your connection point if you are to add the USB-C attachment or the lightning attachment. And this is also where you add your cold shoe attachment. And next to that, the four gold dots, that's how you charge in the case. So you just need to make sure when you're looking at the case that you match the four gold dots up with the four pins that are inside the charging case. Now the only other component that you have is your cold shoe mount and your two attachments for things like your phone and action too. Now with your cold shoe attachment, you just gotta flip up the little lever and then pop it on. You'll see that it just fits in the grooves nicely. And the cold shoe attachment will fit on top of your camera. Now what's great about this cold shoe mount is you could either have this facing forward. So if you're in front of the camera and you wanna see all the information, you can have it face you or you could have it face backward if you're behind camera and you're filming someone and you're miking someone else up. So depending on what you're doing, you can always see the screen. There's a lot of information on the screen, but everything's organized in a way so you could quickly see which microphones are on, which ones are using backup recording, and where your audio levels are. So it's great to be able to have this feature where you can spin it on top of the camera, either facing you, if you're in front of the camera or facing behind if you're filming someone else. Now, if you wanna use the lightning adapter or the USB-C, you just need to pull off that cold shoe mount and then just slide on the lightning or the USB-C attachment. And then you can use something like your phone. And again, these work the same way where you can flip it either direction, whatever side of the device that you're on. Now in the charging case, there's a slot for each of the components. Whatever connection that you use the most, you can just keep it on and put it in the case. They've designed it in a way where it makes it easy so you can attach any of the three connections and always keep it on so that you don't have to keep taking them on and off every time you wanna use it. Okay, so let's talk about the accessory case that comes with this. So it's just a simple little zippered pouch. You get two windscreens, these fuzzy little things. These will cut out any wind sound when you're out filming. So I actually use these all the time because I'm out shooting in the outdoors and a lot of times there's some wind. So these are super useful. You get one for each transmitter. And then you have this little zipper and you get USB-A to USB-C and you get your connection to your camera and that's it. So you don't need to take much with you when you're out filming. And so when you're using the windscreen, you could pull the fuzzy back and you'll see that there is a connection point and you just have to line up the two holes that are open on the fuzzy windscreen with the two little notches on the transmitter. You'll feel it go in and then you just give it a half turn 
and then it'll be snug. It's not gonna fall off. Then half turn counterclockwise to pull it off and that's it. So super small, super convenient. You just need to take these two with you and you basically have everything you need for wireless audio. All right, so let's get into section two and let's start going through how you actually use the DJI mic. When you first open the case, you just wait for all the lights to turn on and they're automatically going to link. Ideally, that's how you wanna use the system. You don't need to link them every time you pull them out and you also don't even need to turn them on. When you flip open the case, they should turn on automatically. Now, if they don't turn on, each device has a power button. You just press and hold on that power button and if your vibration is turned on, you're gonna feel a single vibration that's long. So we'll hold the power button again to turn on and you'll feel a short vibration, just a quick bzz. So long vibration is turning off, short vibration is turning on. Now on the receiver, it doesn't vibrate. So the transmitters have a vibration function, which is actually super useful because it tells you when the microphone powers on or powers off, but it also tells you when there's a backup recording happening. So if they aren't linked, there's a couple ways that you can fix that. One is pull the device out, turn it on, and then put them back into the case and they should automatically link. So this one's not on right now. I'm gonna power this one on and then I'm gonna put it back in the case. We'll see that on the screen it'll say linking and now they're all linked and ready to go. The other way is the linking button that's on the side. So on the transmitter when I showed you earlier, next to the microphone there's the little chain button. That is your linking. So you're gonna press and hold that linking button until the DJI mic is flashing, the transmitter. Now on the receiver, you're gonna swipe down, which goes into your menu settings. You're gonna swipe over to your main settings, and then you're gonna find link device. You're gonna click that, and then you'll click link. And then it will find your transmitter and link it. So there's three different ways that you can link your devices if you're having issues. But the easiest way is to just pop them all in, and they should automatically link. This system is foolproof. It makes it super easy to use. So we're gonna put this on a camera and get started. So I'm gonna have the DJI mic facing me where I can see all the information and I'm gonna get the cable to plug it into the camera. Simple audio cable, I go into the out and I plug it into the camera's input port. And you're gonna see as I talk, the audio meters are gonna be bouncing. You can see them for both microphones because I have both microphones to my mouth. Now if I turn one off, you'll see that the screen automatically adjusts and now you're only seeing the one microphone. The screen is going to shift based on if you have two microphones turned on or if you just have one turned on. And how the screen works is by swiping. So you swipe down or you swipe up to go to different menus. So I'm gonna attach this microphone to the outside of my shirt. So I'll take the little black square, this magnet, put it on the inside and just magnetize it to the outside of my shirt. So if you're seeing the audio meters on, the receiver, that means you're good to start recording. But there are some different things that we can tweak depending on the audio level and how loud you're speaking. So when the microphone's on and it's connected, if you double tap the power button, it's gonna do a short vibration and it's gonna mute the mic. So at any point you can mute these mics and it's not gonna be sending audio to the receiver. You double click that button again, it's going to turn back on and you can start hearing the audio. So you don't have to turn off the transmitter to stop the audio going to the receiver. It's just a double click and it's a mute so it can stay powered on and you just double click it when you wanna use it. Now on the other side where the little microphone is, you click that once, you'll see that a red light has turned on and that's your backup recording. So I'm recording this audio right now. And on the screen, you'll see a little red dot which shows that your backup recording is turned on. And you just click this button once again, the little microphone button, and now your backup recording has stopped. And that's all the functionality of the transmitter itself when you're actually recording. So you can mute or do a backup recording on the transmitter. Now the only other thing that you might do is add the windscreen. So as I showed you earlier, you just pop it on and do a half turn find those little grooves, pop it on, and now you have your transmitter, and if it's windy, wind blowing on you, it's gonna sound much cleaner. Now, if you don't like the look of this fuzzy, you can put it on the inside of your shirt, you could use a jacket. I've used this in a bunch of different ways, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the workflow section. All right, so now let's go over all the features that you have on the screen. So, looking down at the screen with the just one microphone turned on, you're gonna see a lot of different information. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll see an S. 
Now this is telling you what mode you're in. Currently I'm in stereo mode and you'll see the little L that's yellow. That means I'm in stereo mode and this is being recorded to the left channel. Like we were talking about earlier, this records in a few different ways. So you can record on the left channel independently, the right channel independently. You can record on both the left and the right and not have them mixed, or you can mix everything and then you don't have to work with the tracks independently. But when you bring this into your editing software, if it is just on the left channel, that means you're only gonna be hearing it out of your left ear if you have headphones on. So you wanna make sure that you have it in the right mode for the editing that you're going to do later on. So if you wanna change your mode, you're gonna swipe down and the first option is gonna be where you change it. Right now it says stereo. So I'm gonna click that and it's gonna show me some different options. I have two buttons here. On the left, it shows the mode and then on the right, it shows which transmitter is going to which channel. So right now I'm in stereo mode. Transmitter one is going to the left channel. Transmitter two is going to the right channel. And I can flip that. So if I press the right button, I can switch the right and the left to the transmitters. Now the left button where it says stereo, I can click that once, it's gonna go to mono. So now it's not recording on one channel independently, it's recording both the exact same. So if I'm just using one mic, that's fine. It's just recording this audio to both tracks. Now, if I'm using two people, say I'm doing an interview, what happens in mono is it mixes both of these together and puts it on both channels. So there's no way to edit them independently. Now you click the button on the left again, it's gonna bring safety channel. So it's gonna have the M with the yellow S. Now the safety recording is gonna be the same as the mono, except for on one channel, you're gonna be getting your recording at the volume that you're recording at, and the second channel, it's gonna be recording at negative six dB lower. So that's basically giving you some room if things get super loud, you have a safety channel. It's recorded at a lower volume, which allows you then to use that channel if your main recording is too loud and you're getting all this distortion in it from these loud sounds. So it's good to use an environment where you don't know if the audio is gonna be going up and down. If you're in a situation where the audio is consistent, say you're doing a talking head like this, well, you're not gonna need a safety channel. I would use the mono or the stereo recording, depending on if I'm using one or two people, or if I just wanna do a quick mix, I'll use the mono and put two people on that mono track. So looking back at the main screen, next to where the S is that says stereo, you'll see a plus one. Now that plus one is the receiver gain. So that's how much I'm boosting the volume as it's leaving the receiver and going into the camera. So you can increase how loud or how quiet the receiver is sending to your camera. Now next to that, you'll see one with like this bar graph. That is your signal strength between the transmitter and the receiver. Right now I have transmitter one on my shirt and you can see that I have full strength. Transmitter two is turned off, so we're not seeing it here yet. I just wanna show you with one what it's gonna look like and then we'll turn this on and you'll see how things shift a little bit. Now next to that, you'll see a battery indicator. On the top bar next to where the signal strength is, that's the receiver battery. So that's the battery for the receiver here. Now if you look directly under that when one microphone's plugged in, that's the transmitter battery. So basically think of it like the top bar is kind of your receiver information and then underneath that is gonna be your transmitter information. The plus one on the left, that's my transmitter gain. So you can adjust the gain of the transmitter as it's going to the receiver. So if you're working with someone who's talking quieter, you might need to boost the transmitter gain on that person. Or if someone's got a really loud, booming voice, well, you're gonna bring that gain down. Now next to the plus one, if you're in stereo mode, you'll see an L or an R. And this is telling you which track that this transmitter is recording to. So right now it's L, I'm recording to the left channel. And below that you'll see the green bar and that's your audio meters. So you can see as I talk, the audio meters are gonna be bouncing up towards the right side. And if your transmitter gain is turned up too high, you're gonna see this peaking and it's gonna be way too much audio coming in. And also if you have it turned down too low, you won't see very much audio on the transmitter. So ideally you want it hitting in that like three quarters range on the green bar. And you can see when I start talking too loud, it will get into the yellow. And when it's getting into the yellow, it's gonna be recording too loud. And when you see the red, that means it's gonna be distorted and you're gonna be losing that audio. So you wanna be staying just under the yellow when you're recording your audio. In the lower left-hand corner, you're gonna see a little speaker icon. And right now, 
you're seeing the audio bounce on the audio meters and you'll see that that's just a white little speaker icon. Now, if I mute this mic, I double click the power button, you'll see that a slash goes through that speaker icon and there's not gonna be any audio bouncing on the audio meters. So that means that it's muted. So the microphone is still connected, it's still paired, it's linked, everything's turned on, but you're not getting any audio. And so the fix for that is to double click on the transmitter and it's gonna turn on your audio. Now there's another way that you can mute or unmute your audio. You swipe up on the screen. So from the bottom up, just run your finger up. It's gonna bring up a menu for that one transmitter. And you'll see transmitter one, REC on the left-hand side. I can click that button and I'm gonna turn on the backup recording. Now in the center, you'll see that same speaker icon. I can click that, it's gonna mute this transmitter. And then on the right, you'll see how much data you have left for this transmitter. So right now, I'm recording, it's muted, so you're not getting any audio, and it's showing that I have 11 hours left on my transmitter. Now, if you want to format this transmitter, you wanna clear off all the data and you wanna have it fresh, well, you can click the little folder icon and then it will bring up your format screen. You click format, it's going to erase everything off of this transmitter. Now be careful because you just swipe up and you click that button a couple times, it's gonna format it. There's been times where I've accidentally formatted my backup recordings just because my finger touched the screen. It is sensitive when you are working with this DJI mic and there actually is a solution to that and that is you can lock the screen. So when we go back to our home screen where you see just all the basic information, you can single press on the power button on the side of the receiver and it's gonna lock the screen. Now, whenever I touch the screen, nothing's gonna happen. So whenever you're not using this and you don't need to touch anything, turn that lock on. And you just click once on the power button again, it turns the lock off. So let's turn on the second transmitter and I wanna show you how this changes just a little bit. So we'll hold the button on the side, the second transmitter will turn on. And then on the screen, you'll see that automatically the screen's gonna shift around a little bit. You're gonna see now both transmitters on the screen on the left and the right. Transmitter one is on the left, transmitter two is on the right. So when we look at this information right now, you're gonna see that transmitter one has, it's on the left channel, it's got plus one on the volume gain and everything's turned on. And then you'll see on transmitter two, it's got a plus 10 of the volume gain. It's on the right channel. Now, remember how we swiped up for the information for the transmitter? Well, when you have both transmitters turned on, you swipe up on the side of the screen that the transmitter's on. So if you want to adjust the settings for transmitter one, you swipe up on the left side. And you'll see that it says TX1 when you do that. Swipe down to get out of this menu, swipe up on the right side, and now you'll see TX2, and you're gonna see transmitter two. So just remember when you have two on, you wanna swipe on the side of the screen of the transmitter that you wanna work with. Now also the other thing that pops up in the upper right hand corner, you're gonna see the signal strength for your second transmitter. Now let's swipe down on the screen and you're gonna go back into the stereo mode and everything's the same as I showed you earlier, but now we're using both mics. So in stereo mode, you can go left and right, or you can go right and left. So you can switch which track that you want, which transmitter. I don't know a lot of situations that I'd really care, but that is an option. You can go to mono, which basically is gonna mix both of these, and it's gonna put them on both sides. So it's gonna put it both on the left and right channel. And then you could do the mono with the safety channel. Again, you're mixing both of these together, but you're getting that one that's recorded at six decibels lower so that you can have that safety channel in loud situations. So let's put it into mono and swipe up and you'll see that on this main screen, the left and the right are gone for each of the transmitters and you're just gonna have an M in the upper left-hand corner. If we swipe down, we put it into mono safety channel, swipe up again twice. Now it's changed, you have the yellow icon with the M in it, that's a safety channel. So you just know that you're in mono safety versus just mono. So swipe down, click that again, let's go back into stereo. And now you'll see that you'll, they'll have the left and the right channel up again. And so just make sure you know which mode you're in before you hit record. 
Now, if you wanna do the recording on either transmitter, you can again swipe up on the screen, turn on the backup recording, or just click once on the transmitter and it's gonna start doing the backup recording. Now, you can see on the screen which side is doing a backup recording. The little red dot is gonna be next to your gain and you can see each of these have a red dot next to them so you know which transmitter is recording at what time for the backup recording. So when you have headphones plugged in, you're gonna see a little headphone icon up next to the receiver gain. And that's just showing you that you have headphones plugged in. Now you're not gonna see your volume of your headphones, but you can go into your menu setting and you can actually change the volume. So if you're not hearing properly what you're recording, you can boost your volume or bring your volume down. So this could get pretty messy pretty quick with all of this information, but it's all pretty easy once you understand what all of these components do. So that's basically all the information that you'll see on the screen. And that's everything you need when you're out recording. However, there's still a few more things that we need to go through in the menu. So if we swipe down, you'll go into your main menu and now let's swipe right once. And this is where you could change your receiver gain. So that's the audio that's going from your receiver to your camera. You can just click on this button and you can just slide your finger to the right or to the left. So you could go negative 12 decibels up to positive 12 decibels. So you can go 12 dB over or 12 dB under what is zero on this device. So you have a lot of range to work with if you need to bring the volume up going into camera or bring the volume down. You just swipe up to get out of that menu. All right, in your main menu setting again, let's swipe right and you have your volume for your headphones. So right now my headphone volume is set at zero. I could boost that if I'm not hearing enough out of my headphones, but I know it's being recorded properly. And so with your volume indicator, you could go plus 12 decibels or minus 12 decibels, just like the receiver game. Swipe up, you go out of that menu, and then let's swipe right one more time and you have your second settings menu. So how it works is you swipe down, you have your main settings. These are just quick settings, I guess. And then you go into your deeper settings, which is this little gear icon. So when we click into the gear icon, we have a few other things that we can change with these mics. Okay, so first is the low cut filter. So if you have some lower frequencies, it's sometimes called like a rumble filter, well that can cut off a lot of those frequencies. Now I don't typically use the low cut filter in my microphone because I end up doing that in my post, but if you need to do it at the recording, you can do it here. Now next you have your vibration notifications. So as I was saying earlier, your device vibrates and you can turn those notifications off. I personally like to keep them on because if I turn on my backup recording, it gives me a quick little vibration that tells me that it started recording, turn it off, I feel the vibration. The same with the mute. So it's nice to have the vibration. It's actually a great feature because it just gives you that added sense of knowing when something clicks on or turns off. Whereas when I've worked with other microphones of this size, they don't have that kind of a feature and you always have to be double checking. So it's a good addition that DJI added to these mics. And in the menu, if you wanna turn that off for whatever reason, you do it in this deeper menu. Now also in this deeper menu we talked about earlier, but this is where you can link your device. So if there is a linking issue between the case or you don't have the case with you for whatever reason, you go into this deeper menu and then you press and hold the linking on the transmitter and you press the button in here to link, they will link up that way. Also in this deeper menu is where you can adjust your transmitter gain. So when you go into your transmitter game, you'll see transmitter one and transmitter two. As I showed you earlier, my transmitter one is at plus one, my transmitter two is at plus 10. And these work just the same way as the receiver. You have plus 12 decibels or minus 12 decibels. So you can raise your volume at the transmitter or lower the volume at your transmitter. Just depends on how loud you're talking and how that's affecting the recording. You just have to remember that your transmitter gain is in this deeper menu, whereas the receiver gain is in that first menu. It kind of is a little confusing. I wish they would have put the transmitter gain in that first menu or even put it on the swipe up so it's more accessible, but it is in this deeper menu setting. Now next you have your brightness and that's for the screen. So if your screen is too bright, you can turn it down here. And then the last few options in this menu are language, date and time, and then also you can reset all your settings back to the factory settings. And then you just swipe up twice to get out of this deeper menu to go back to the main homepage with all of your information. The last thing I wanna talk about is how you get the backup recordings off of these transmitters. So when you're recording, you're doing that backup, well, you wanna get that audio file on your computer, 
you just plug into your USB-C on the side of the transmitter and plug directly into your computer. And when you do that, it's just gonna pop up like a hard drive would. So you just open up the folder and all of your transmitter files are gonna be in there and you can just drag them onto your hard drive. So it's super simple. You don't have to deal with any third-party apps to get the audio off of the transmitter onto your receiver. If you're someone who's coming from the Rode Wireless Go 2, you understand how frustrating that is to deal with the exporting, whereas this, you just plug in, pull the files over, you're done. So that's it when it comes to the DJI mic. That's all of the settings that you have access to and how all the buttons work and where everything is in the menus. All right, so let's get into the next section, which is workflow and actually using these when you're out filming your videos. So let's talk about workflow and just using these microphones because they are super simple once you have everything set up and they are really useful to be able to capture audio basically anywhere. So a lot of times I'll just put it on the outside of my shirt like this. I'll use that magnet on the inside and then just have the microphone here. You don't wanna have it too close to your neck cause you'll start getting some like bassy lower sounds. You want it a little bit away, but it is an omnidirectional mic, which means that it's recording in all directions. So you're gonna be just getting audio here. Now, another really convenient way that I've been using this microphone is not with this little square, but actually just using a lanyard. So this is from Insta360, the Go series of camera. And I often have an Insta360 Go with me. You could also use the DJI Action 2 if you use that camera. But you could use the lanyard that you would use for the camera that sits on your chest for also the microphone. It just makes it super easy. So I often have one of these lanyards on me if I'm doing POV stuff, and I can just pop the microphone on and I get audio too. And also with using a lanyard, it's not gonna pull on your shirt weird. Whereas if you just use the little square, it might pull down on the shirt depending on what you're wearing. Now the other way I'll use it is if I have a backpack on. I have a backpack, hold on. So I use a Shimoda bag and on these camera backpacks, which are great backpacks, I could just clip it right onto the strap right here and so now I have good audio. It's in the same position that it would be when it's on my shirt, but it's on the strap. Could also hook it into one of these pockets here on the side. But the issue is if you hook it into a pocket on the side, if you turn your head, you're gonna lose audio. And you'll actually hear this fluctuation when you're using a backpack like this and you move your head back and forth. So I like to try to keep it as centered as possible. And that's how I'm gonna get the cleanest audio with either my shirt or using a backpack. Now, another good way to use these mics is if you have a lavalier mic. So you could put the DJI mic on your belt, in your pocket, and then use a lavalier mic up to your shirt. A lot of times when I'm working with my fitness clients, I'll use an over-the-ear mic, and it's the same thing. I'll have the over-the-ear mic plugged into the DJI mic, which is just in someone's pocket or on the back of their clothes. It makes it really easy to hide this because it is so small. And then you could use the little lavalier or headset mic or whatever you need for the situation that you're filming in. Another way to use this microphone is the little tripod that the Action 2 works off of. You can actually hook this because it's a magnet to the top and then you have a little microphone that you can have on your desk if you want to do voiceover work or if you don't mind the microphone in your shot, this could be the microphone that you're using for your videos. Now, I personally like to use the DJI mic to get myself away from camera. So there's a lot of times in my videos where I'll do shots where I'm filming on a longer lens and I'm a small person in a big landscape. It gets away from always doing content where camera's just an arm reach away. So if you're someone who does vlogs or you do videos where you're filming yourself, it gives you that flexibility to get away from camera. And you can take the transmitter pretty far away from the receiver. DJI says you can go up to 250 meters, which is a pretty far distance. Now, I've never been in a situation where I've needed to go that far. Everywhere that I've filmed, even when I'm on one ridge line filming myself on another ridge line, I still have clean audio wherever I go. And so when I'm making my adventure films, this has become an essential tool because not only does it give me the flexibility to move away from my camera, but also it just gives me that backup recording. So if I'm in a situation where there's a lot going on, I don't have to worry so much about making sure that I have a clear line of sight to my camera and making sure that my 
audio recording is always good. I have that backup recording. The other cool thing about this microphone is you could use it as a voiceover or just an external microphone without being connected to a camera. So if you're collecting sound effects or you just wanna get some audio for something or do a voiceover, well, you could just use this and just turn on the backup recording. You don't have to have the receiver attached. That makes it super useful and versatile to use in a bunch of different situations. So the majority of the time when I'm recording, I'm in the mono mode and I'm not using that safety channel because I typically don't need that extra range. Now, if I'm doing an interview with another creator or someone else, I'll put it into the stereo mode and make sure that I have each track on each channel independently. That way, when I go into my editing software, I'll mix it so that the tracks will be on both the left and the right but I have independent control so I can change the volume or make adjustments depending on each mic individually. A couple more things about workflow. Make sure that everything's charged before you go out to location. Now the charging case definitely gives you a lot more flexibility. You could charge all the devices about two times more than they have initially. So if the receiver has five hours and the transmitters have five and a half, well you essentially get around 15 hours for each device, which is a lot, that's the entire day of filming. You could do a couple days with these and probably get away without having to charge anything. But because there's not a removable battery, you do need to keep track of how much charge is on the receivers and the transmitters and just make sure that you're popping it into the case once in a while to keep that charge going. Also one thing before you leave to go do your shoot is check those backup recordings and make sure you format both of the transmitters. So just make sure you pull everything off. I've done some shoots where I've gone out and I needed to use a backup recording and I realized I didn't pull the audio off from the previous day. You just wanna make sure that you're always on top of that and just always have your backup recordings pulled off and format once you're done with that. Because of the size and how easy these are to use, I'm sure there's so many creative uses to be able to capture clean audio for any of your videos. So let me know down in the comments how you're gonna use your DJI mic. And if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications. On this channel, I do education around how you can make better videos. And if you're into adventure films, I have a second channel that's dedicated just to story-driven content. No education, it's all about just stories from expeditions. And next, I highly suggest you check out this video right here. It goes through how you can tell a story in your videos. And if you're a YouTube creator, I highly suggest you watch this video. I'll see you on the next one.